on the street We get the funniest looks from everyone we meet Hey, hey, we're the monkeys And people say we monkey around But we're too busy singing To put anybody down We go where we want to Do what we like to do We don't want the time to get restless There's always something new Hey, hey, we're the monkeys And people say we monkey around But we're too busy singing To put anybody down We're just trying to be friendly Come and watch us sing and play We're the young generation And we've got something to say Oh Anywhere Just look over your shoulder Guess who'll be standing there Hey, hey, we're the monkeys And people say we monkey around But we're too busy singing To put anybody down You know we love to please A manufactured image with no philosophies We hope you like our story, although there isn't one That is to say there's many, that way there is more fun You've told us you like action and games of many kinds You like to dance, we like to sing, so let's all lose our minds We know it doesn't matter, cause what you came to see Is what we'd love to give you, and give it one, two, three But it may come three, two, one, two, or jump from nine to five And when you see the end in sight, the beginning may arrive For those who look for meanings, in form as they do fact We might tell you one thing, but we'd only take it back Not back like in a box back, not back like in a race Not back so we can keep it, but back in time and space You say we're manufactured, to that we all agree So make your choice and we'll rejoice in never being free Hey, hey, we are the monkeys, we've said it all before The money's in, we're made of tin, we're here to give you more The money's in, we're made of tin, we're here to give you... Rock Warehouse, now with the look and feel of hand-tooled leather. There's a smile on the wind as it touches my face and starts to erase all the gloom. And the sun with a kiss begins to dismiss the memory of my life without you Well, it seems like yesterday That my path took me away Although I know it's been at least a year But now my path heads home And your patient time alone Has brought me even closer to you, dear And this plane gets closer every minute I look down To a watch that keeps looking back at me And it says to me, be patient, son, you've waited this long But how can I be strong? And the 
This plane gets closer every minute I look down To a watch that keeps looking back at me And it says to me, be patient, son, you've waited this long But how can I be strong? Well, the plane's finally down and the engine stopped their sound I look in the crowd and there you stand was time is forever closed behind Cause I told you I'd come back and here I am Yes, I told you I'd come back and here I am I told you I'd come back and here I am So far, I failed because I should have wrote down. The, well, I should have wrote down the sources for some of these tracks. Some of them I did, but Valerie, of course, I put this together like whatever. It's off one of the Rhino CDs. It could be off. Listen to the band. It could be off of the first reissue of Birds mm-hmm. and the Bees. But now I'm blanking out. But that definitely was the mono mix of it. So, which is cool because wonder- that's like the 45. I'm good with that. Well, I guess we'll have to wait to the next song because if the next song comes up and it's a mono mix, maybe this entire file is mono. It's not. They're staring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, now, listen to the ba- uh, the Mike Nesmith track. I'm trying to think. I've never heard a mono version of, of that. But that but was I'm, mono. It, it it was definitely mono. So it might be a mono file because when I do Ski Lodge, mm-hmm. uh, um, I don't think people hear it in stereo. I think people hear it in mono. I don't know. I know this is in stereo. Of course, I don't usually listen to the music part with headphones on. Yeah. We'll soon find out, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, oh, I always do. <clears throat> we'll see. Because Shades of Grey... Oh, well, I'm not going to tell you what's coming up. But anyway, yeah. those two tracks. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, I was going to say that the first song, Good Clean Fun, one of the prime examples that Michael Nesmith was right there at the beginning of the country rock movement. Oh, definitely. Oh First national gosh. band. We're yeah, talking but even during the monkeys he was doing. Of course, he was off doing his stuff. You know, he was recording his stuff on his own. Then they were just throwing it on monkeys albums. You but, know, Davey and Mickey had had nothing to do with that. No, that's a whole mic thing. The uh, yeah. but first national band and then the monkeys doing that. We're talking uh what, what was that 69? Um, but still yeah. he was doing think about it, even on the first album, there's touches of country on there. Papa Jean's Blues. Papa Jean's Blues is a fine example. There's always been that sprinkling 
on all the monkeys records. Absolutely. But, uh, and that predates Sweetheart of the Rodeo. So mm-hmm. just saying, of course, you know, yep. the birds kind of dabbled in it too a little bit. Not yeah. until they went full blown. Dabbled in what? Hard. Country rock or yeah. some of the hard stuff? Yeah. No, country rock. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you were talking. I thought this was like drug talk. Oh, drug talk. Well, I'm sure there was a lot. Yeah. I don't, I wasn't aware of anything. No. Uh, okay. So, uh, 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 prog Rock Deuce has got to remind myself some of these tracks don't have the monkeys actually playing instruments outside of the vocals. Uh, a, a lot of them uh, don't, and a lot of them do. Um, it just depends on what album it was. And uh, some songs have uh, participation of a few monkeys. But just like anything else, you know, people are going to say, oh, the reason the monkeys aren't in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is because they didn't play their own instruments, blah, blah, blah. But aren't the Supremes in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I don't remember them jamming in the studio uh, to stop in the name of love or anything like that, you know. And, so. and don't forget the Beach Boys pet sounds. All that mid-60s Beach Boys stuff, Brian was putting all that stuff together. The Wrecking Crew were the musicians, and he brought the beat. He had the records done. He'd have all the vocals laid out and the Beach Boys just had to come in off a tour and lay down their vocals. And remember, they didn't like Pet Sounds until Pet Sounds became a critical favorite. Then they liked it. Just like Kiss. Yep. If the Elder, just think about this. If the Elder had been a big hit, we wouldn't have Paul Stanley bitching about it. That's just all I'm going to say about that. If the Elder had been a big hit, we wouldn't have had to put up with Lick It Up. That's damned straight. (laughs) So, all right, there you go. Wow. All right. So what do we have next, Steve? What's uh what what do we have next? Next song is one of my favorite monkey. Well, all these are my favorite my favorite monkey songs. But we're gonna start with one that just has a great opening riff. Everyone's gonna know it. Um, if you are a monkeys fan. Uh I don't think it was a hit, it was a single or a hit single, but it sure is delicious and it is called The Girl I Knew Somewhere. Yes, great. And then my next choice I'm going to talk about, well, or bring up is a track that was supposed to be stated, slated for uh, headquarters. But, uh, oh, of course, you know, you had Don Kirshner getting involved and there was some Mm. kind of songwriting issue because wasn't who wrote that uh, brain problem? Uh, Who wrote what? uh, All of your toys. Oh, I forgot. Bill Chadwick. Bill Chadwick, I think. Was it Bill Chadwick? Okay. I think so. But this is an, a, a, a great track just for the fact that all four members are playing on this track since Prog Rock Dude was uh, bringing this up. It wasn't released till 20 years later. Uh, I think it was on, what, Missing Links, uh, the first one. Um, and they also started playing this live in 2011. But I think it's a great track. I think it would have been uh, it would have been a perfect fit on headquarters. Of course, mm-hmm. it fits right in. But this is where the headquarters session started. So we're going to hear that. And uh, I don't know. Let's get started. Let's just do it. And uh, we'll take from there. But the girl I knew somewhere, total classic.
Yeah, that should have been on headquarters as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I, I, I Ooh, will that agree. I, quick. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, you always reveal them too early. Um, I couldn't click the button fast enough. You should click the button faster. I know, I'm Grant. incompetent. Jesus. Yeah, you competent fool. You I have needed... a lot more subscribers than me, but I could have hit that button in time. I know, I know. Uh, I know. Yeah. Some things just work out the way they do. Um, but yeah, I, in fact, I think both of the, uh, um, girl I knew somewhere was the B side a little bit, me a little bit you, but I think like you, you know, you kind of almost a double A side, oh, you definitely. know, neither of those. Yeah. And I think both of those could have been on, uh, um, been on, um, uh, headquarters or, or whatever. Both are just wonderful songs, but the next song is from headquarters and, if you listen to the lyrics of the song, I swear to God, here it is. What, what is it? 60 years later or something, or almost 60 years later. Yeah. And the, and the lyrics are just as relevant today as they ever have been. And it's crazy. You know, I mean, sure. All of your toys, of course that's relevant because it's their they're relationship. Toys? Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Or, or, you know, we've all, we've all got our special toys, but, um, uh, Shades of Grey was kind of like a social commentary song, and, it, and it's still still relevant. It's still relevant. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, don't you think? I I still think that all your toys is a great track, and it should have been on headquarters. And Bill Martin, that's who it was. Yeah, who wrote it. Oh, what did I say? Who did uh, I? Say? You said Bill Chadwick. Well, it's one of those guys. Yeah, it was one of the Bills. One of the um, Bills. But DC had asked earlier which ones did we pick. Usually the one oh. the one that we talk about. It usually goes. Like a song I picked and a song Grant picked. Song I picked, song Grant picked. That's not my order. That's the order that that um. We just go back Grant, and forth. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, I think Grant just wants to show me up. Just it's, say my song's better than yours. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but uh, you know, we kind of had uh, Steve kind of ranked his, but I didn't. I'm just putting. I don't know. I can't rank any of these. Well, no, but I will tell you, I when we get to them, I will tell you two of my all-time favorite tracks, though. But here's, all of here's, these are my favorite tracks. So here's here's Grant BS for you. Okay, Schnee, we're gonna rant it. 
rank the songs, rank them, rank them. So I sat there for hours. Uh, this one, take that one, add this one, move things. I, I ranked them all, sent it to him. He goes, eh, I'm not going to rank them. I'm just going to pick 10 songs. It's like, you put me through that, you son of a gun. You son of a Dolans. Well, yeah, but you like all of these. It didn't take oh, you that long to do this, for God's sake. You know that. Uh, 15 minutes. Crap. 15 minutes. <laughs> but all of these are great. We could have picked way more tracks than we did. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there are so many. The Monkey's catalog is so vast and so deep and so full of uh, pop goodness. Loveliness. Mm -hmm. Loveliness. Mm -hmm. We could have picked more. But you know, and actually, what we did, I wasn't, I didn't know how long we were going to talk, so I kind of padded it. So that kind of, that's why the order kind of went out of order because there's no real ranking. Because I'm going, well, most of these songs are two minutes fifty seconds, two minutes twenty five. Let's see, yeah, yeah it depends on what we. It's padded. There's probably enough for another show, but we're just going to go for as long. We're just going to go a couple hours and do what we can. Look, it's already eight twenty four. Of course, I already started late, but. Uh, it's all right. We'll go two hours and we'll see where we end up. Okay. So anyway, we, as we can see, Shades of Grey is up next. My next pick, you will recognize this. I'm not going to say what it is. You'll figure it out. But it's got Maybe I should reveal it since you revealed mine early. Well, I, you don't have control of the button. Well, you could reveal it. Go ahead. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to make a mockery of this monkey's show. Okay. Like you do. But anyway, it is all right. Pleasant Valley Sunday, damn it. And it's a great <laughs> single. In fact, I choose the B side of the single later in my ranking. It's one of the perfect pop singles, I think, of the mid 60s. You know, mm -hmm. Pleasant Valley Sunday with words on the other side. And words was a great track. And it ranked, I think, where did it hit on Billboard? Like number 11. So it was mm -hmm. like a double A side, but Pleasant Valley Sunday, if you did not know this. And then I read something tonight that kind of conflicted what I had understood. Uh, the riff to Pleasant Valley Sunday, which is a great riff. I was under the impression that Mike Nesmith came up with that in the studio. Uh, which one? I wasn't paying attention. Pleasant Valley Sunday. No, no, I don't think Nesmith. And then I read that Chip Douglas came up with it. Mm-hmm. I've read two different conflicting. Actually, I read that um, Justin Hayward from Moody Blues came up with it. Really? No. I think it was probably Hendrix. <laughs> Put a little wah on that. I don't know. That's all I'm saying. So, all right, here we go. Here we go. Yesterday, life was such a simple game a child could play. It was easy then to tell right from wrong, easy then to tell weak from strong. When a man should stand and fight, or just go. Thank you. 
shades of She's proud today because the roses are in bloom. Mr. Green, he's so serene, he's got a TV in every room. Another Pleasant Valley Sunday. Here instead of symbol. Make it hard for me to see My thoughts all seem to stray To places far away I need a change of scenery One of the best singles of the 60s, ladies and gentlemen. You have, there is no doubt, that is perfection. Yeah. The songwriting. Who was that by? What? Who sang that song? What what do you mean? Who sang this, the uh, Pleasant Valley Sunday? Mickey? No. What are you talking about? Oh, oh, it's the monkeys. Okay. I didn't know. Jesus God. <laughs> anyway, you have to admit, 1967, one of the best singles of the year. God dang. And you know what yeah. they did to get that effect at the end of it? They just took all the faders and just like, yeah, threw it right up in the reverb and just, that's just crazy. That was better than any single released off of Sergeant Pepper. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, because there were no singles released off of Sergeant Pepper. Sounds like the Friends theme ripped off a, a little. Well, I guess. I don't know. I guess it sounds kind of related. You know, yeah. Axel Rose <laughs> took all of his moves from Davy Jones. Oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen. Where do we go? Where do we go? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, He's exactly Davy Jones. <laughs> oh, totally. 
Prog rock dude, good. I'm glad you enjoy it. See, prog rock dude's one of those young guys, like Logan. Mm-hmm. You the, know, um, the best single released off the back of a cereal box. <laughs> Do you remember those? Cere- Absolutely. Remember honeycombs? I think like alphabets. You could get like the Jackson Five or the Monkeys. Bobby or, Sherman, the Bobby Monkeys, Sherman. the Archies. Archie. There used to be a cereal called Hawaiian Puffs that was basically mm-hmm. like, um, um, are you familiar with like sugar smacks? I am. I love it. These were sugar smacks um, that were, um, you know, without the sugar. They were like those, that puffed rice. They're the puffed rice. Yeah. Yeah. And they were called uh, uh, Hawaiian Puffs. And inside of it, that's where I got my uh, Green Hornet Dakota ring. Remember the Green Hornet? I do. Yeah. I. Uh, that's like one of the first things I remember, a toy getting out of the, uh, um, uh, getting out of cereal box. It was a uh, um, Green Hornet, but I don't remember ever. No, I think I got a Jackson 545. That's the only thing that I remember actually cutting off of a box of cereal. Doc, there is a show at nine. Remember, we split these up into two so the uh, YouTube police don't get up in arms. Yeah, so we play all the good stuff and then wait for the wait for Doc to show up and just play the mediocre stuff. So you can always rewatch it. I'm going to leave this show up. It's not like I'm taking it down. Uh, Rhino released a few monkey singles as cereal box cutouts. Oh yeah, yes. like in the Rhino handmade stuff, or was it? What was no, it? No, there was. Remember when, when that? Remember when that ten CD box came out? It's called yeah. like the uh, the Monkeys Fifty or whatever. Around mm-hmm. that time, to certain music chains, they released like a pack of four cardboard cutouts. Now, they were the songs that were originally featured on the cereal boxes, but the design of them was not the exact zero box design, but they were the cardboard records that you could play. Yeah. All right. We could talk. That would be another show. Exactly. Oh gosh. Yeah. We can always talk cereal around doc. Um, <sighs> he loves cereal. But, yeah. So let's, let's go into the, uh, the next couple tracks. Okay. So the first track, so we'll play these in two. The first tracks, what Steve has picks just so DC can follow. Cause I know he's yeah, having geez. trouble following the show. Uh, so the first track is Steve's. The second track is mine. So anyway, there you go. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, this one is called sometime in the morning. I love it. It's just a great, a a great, um, Mickey track. I consider this, a a, a, you know, like a deep cut or whatever, because I never heard this on the radio, but it's just, just a great monkey song. It should have been a single. It had to be a single somewhere. Australia, Japan, Mm -hmm. God only knows. Mm -hmm. It was uh, great. So I'm picking Auntie's Municipal Court, which I guess you could consider this a deep track. It's hard to find any information on it. It's a Mike Nesmith, Keith Allison track, but I love it. Mickey does vocals. It's perfection. Yeah. You know, that's the thing with Birds and the Bees. They're real, they're great highs. And then, you know, it's kind of, it's not like Pisces where everything is just top notch you know yeah i thought burst of bees and the monkeys was the first monkeys album with pretty deep valleys it's got deep but there's really nothing bad on it no 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 it's just a little bit more uh not quite as accessible so anyway yeah. we'll just get going and you know we could be yapping we'll never get through this <laughs> You never knew 
Silent brass statue where it lies the door Used to come as one, now come as four Somebody here just sent for more Red and yellow cartoon saying We need to We need to More than you More than you Silent brass statue where it lies the door Used to come as one, now come as four Somebody stole their mind Somebody stole their mind They say they can't find What is kind What is about this track is that for one it's a great mike nesmith song but it's country-ish country rock influence but then it's also psychedelic yes absolutely here here's something that a lot of people don't pay attention to that but well i think everyone here probably does if they're music fans is the mike and mickey sometimes it's subtle but they'll when they harmonize together it's incredible. I think that it w- within the monkeys framework, they sounded fantastic together. Um, and you hear it a lot throughout there. You know, it wasn't a normal thing. Right. Um, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just fantastic. And I, I love Annie's municipal court. That's another strong highlight on, uh, on the peaks and valleys album, you know, birds, the bees and the monkeys. Um, but uh, Quispin Quake, there was also, I think, one called Kanga, which was like orange flavored. Now, Quispin Quake, they were the same flavor, but weren't they different shapes? I think they were different shapes. They were different shapes, same flavor. But then there was a, it was, it, I think it was called Kanga, it came later, uh, and it was an orange flavored cereal. And uh, that character never really caught on. That's why everyone still talks about Quispin Quake. Um, but, uh, I think all the all the uh, commercials were done by the same people that did like Rocky and Bullwinkle or something. Uh, um, could be. But do you remember Freakies? We are the Freakies. We are the Freakies. This is the Freakies tree. We never miss a meal. Oh, no, because we love a cereal. That was oh, produced sorry. by uh, Perina. Yeah. Uh, they got well, out yeah. of the cereal business. Well, no, it's just that we were eating cat food when we were kids. <laughs> Is that what it was? It never tasted like cat food. Yeah. Was, was King Vitamin like Quisp? 
I don't Queen Vitamin or Queen King Vitamin was was very much like uh, Captain Crunch Quisp, that same flavor, just uh, different shape. Different shape. Oh my god, it's already it's um, gone. This show's already went to hell already. Oh no, well, it's beautiful. Oh, I know it's fine. All right, what's your next? Uh, what's your next your track, Mister? Next, Mr. next song is another Mike song, and this is one I think that. Um, that Mickey and Mike harmony happens that I'm talking about. And uh, it is called the door into summer. And the uh, track that I am picking is the B side to pleasant Valley Sunday. Um, this track originally was uh, recorded for more of the monkeys and it, uh, it had Mickey and Peter singing it on that version. And of course this version also has Mickey and Peter singing on it. Peaked at number 11 back in the day, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, let's just keep it moving. That's what we do here in the warehouse. We just try to keep things moving. So uh, come on. Exactly. <laughs> From a killing in the market on the war The children of King Midas there As they found him in his counting house Where nothing counts but more And he thought he heard the echoes of a penny whistle band And the laughter from a distant caravan Brightly painted line of circus wagons in the sand Fading through the door into summer With his travel logs of maybe next year places As a trade-in for a name upon the door And he pays for it with years he cannot Buy back with his tears when he finds out there's been no one keeping score. And he thought he heard the echoes of a penny whistle band and the laughter from a distant caravan. And the brightly painted line of circus wagons in the sand fading through the door into. Yes, he thought he heard the echoes of a penny whistle band And the laughter from a distant caravan And the brightly painted line of circus Wagons in the sand Fading through the door into summer There's no denying Love with you, girl, is just like dying Hearts on my cool oh, How can I make you stay? Don't turn away I can still hear you saying those words that never were true Spoken to Tears, but all I can hear are those words. 
still talking cereal, ladies and gentlemen. What a great track. That is a great track. Something I'm noticing here, Grant, is yeah. literally, it sounds to me like you are cutting these songs in half and you're only playing part of them because they go by so quickly. I'm so <laughs> used to songs going on for three and a half, four minutes these mm -hmm. days that literally the door into summer and words together equals like the length of like one friggin' Oasis song. God, I you know, <laughs> Oasis. I don't mean to bring them up. Ugh. That's okay. I don't mind Maybe. the first Oasis album so much. It's all right. I'd love the second album. I think second the second album is fine. But after that, mm. yeah. it's like, hello down there, which is a great Tony Randall movie, uh, uh, co starring uh, Richard Dreyfus. And uh, they lived in this under. Uh, or this under the sea house or whatever and richard dreyfus was the leader of a band he did these great songs like glub 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 i'm floating on a sea of love and little goldfish totally totally off topic here but i i, I love that movie yeah but kirshner was out of the whole scene by the time head came around yeah but i don't know and pretty much kirshner was out i mean he had very little influence on uh, headquarters other than taking you know what did davy and mickey do like three tracks outside of the headquarters sessions because they made some kind of deal with him yeah i think a little bit me a little bit you was one of those tracks yeah i think that i think that the rest of the monkeys had a big problem with that yeah oh it caused issues yeah there was another track that really caused a lot of problems that uh, that was supposed to be for birds, bees, and the monkeys. And I think, you know, you always, did you ever hear, I know every, people in the comments, you, I know we're going to go on a little, maybe we can rein it in a bit, but I was unaware. Did you ever hear that Mike Nutsmith interview where he was talking about how he and Peter hated each other? Yeah. And I was just wondering, but I think it all, I wonder if that stemmed from when they were doing birds, bees and Peter Tork burned through all the studio uh, session, their royalties basically to record lady baby. Do you ever read about that? How he burned through all this money and it, they were just pissed off. Uh, yeah. I see. The thing is, it's funny because you, because you, you read so many stories about that album. It was supposed to be a two record album and Peter Tork. Yeah. Spent all this money and none of his songs got on the album. I, I think they were pissed. Yeah. I think that's probably where the riff happened because they seemed like if you listen to the headquarters sessions, everybody's getting along. Everybody's great. I yeah. don't think that there was a, a problem between Nesmith and Tork, but I think when Tork, cut into everybody else's income and royalties well i would be pissed too for, but I never for a really, mediocre song too <laughs> i should have put it on here for the hell of it i almost did Nothing's, but i didn't yeah. it's all right i don't mind it um but anyway we're on a tangent see it's 856 i bet you since we've been talking we could probably crank out two more songs before we uh call it a day well, or start the second episode, show. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. What's your next, what's your next track, Steve? Uh, one called, uh, 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 uh Randy Scouse get, I'm not going to go into the story about alternate title because they had to call it alternate okay. title in the UK because Randy Scouse get was sort mm -hmm. of a, I guess a diss of some sort and you go ahead. And then, uh, the track I'm picking is the opening track to headquarters. You told me, which I love it. You've got mm -hmm. that acoustic guitar and then Peter Torque's banjo. People really need to give Peter Tork more credit because the guy. Not as a singer. 
No, but as a musician. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. His listen to the banjo on this song. Oh, my God. But that's what was so great. How many tracks during this era even had banjo on it? A well, I wish we could song. listen to it in stereo. Well, this is the mono mix. <laughs> this really is the mono mix. I took all the headquarters tracks off the mono. Okay. Off the uh uh rhino handmade right all right so we'll just keep going so uh randy scouse get alternate title yep yeah so we don't want to forget that She won't come and lose my mind It's too easy humming songs To a girl in yellow dress It's been a long time since the party And the room is in a mess The four kings of VMI Are sitting stately on the floor There are birds out on the sidewalk And a ballet at the door He reminds me of a penguin With few and plaster hair There's talcum powder on the letter And the birthday
hate when these tracks just zip by and they're short, sweet, instead of these long, drawn out monstrosities that we have now, or we had yeah. later in the 70s. Uh, right there. Um, uh, John Patterson uh, mentions about the Monkey Mobile. When we were kids, uh, every year during Thanksgiving and Christmas, we drive to Simi Valley, you know, because we were Orange County based. And uh, my aunts, uncles, grandparents, they were all in Simi Valley in Chatsworth. So we drive, and this is before they opened up, you know, different freeways. And we'd pass by the place. I must have been George Barris's, George Barris's place because they'd have cars out there. And a few times they had the Monkey Mobile uh, on display outside. So we'd see it from the freeway. It's pretty amazing. We would just, oh my god, it's the Monkey Mobile. And uh, but it was the it was the place that made them. That's cool, yeah. uh, Ernesto. Your flaw is that you did not have the Monkey Mobile. If had you had the monkey mobile, you could have got laid instead of you're playing the wrong music to trying to. Uh, yeah. So I figured out that's what my problem has been all this time. I you got every music. monkey mobile would get you noticed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, not everybody can have it. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Uh, where are we? Oh, we're an hour, hour into it. All right. Let's uh, end this stream. We will crank up. Give us a couple minutes to regroup, and I have to requeue and all that. Um, and we will start with the second hour. I'm thinking we might. Well, let me look. We might. Mm, I don't know. We've went pretty fast on this one. As long as you stop talking, we could do it. <laughs> well, we'll stop this hour, and we will start at the next hour. All right. I want to thank everybody for uh, popping in and hanging out in the chat. How track. many people Please. we got? How many people? We've got 33 at the moment. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. Um, so please come over to the second stream, for God's sakes. There's more uh, gosh tasty, sakes. more tasty goodness in the next All week. More banana, banana nut soda tasty goodness. All right. So we will see you. Thanks, everybody. Go to the next stream. It's all up on the website. Are we going to change our clothes?